And today we are going to talk about the Arrhenius uh, temperature dependence of diffusion and anisotropy. So we've been talking about concentration dependence of D. We've been con uh, talking about uh, this kind of concentration profile as a function of distance and time. Um, we've been looking at you know, D, the concentration dependence as well. But we need to also remember that, as you might anticipate, diffusivity depends on temperature. Uh, and it's also this, uh, it's a tensor property as well. Uh, but that's a little bit, um, and it can or may or may not be anisotropic, so we'll get into that in just a bit. But um, let's first talk about the dependence of diffusivity with temperature. So as you might imagine, what's the diff what's the temperature dependence of diffusivity or any temperature dependence in most of the times of this class will be the right answer. It's Arrhenius. So another Arrhenius relationship that we kind of see in addition to kind of our enthalpy formation for vacancy, and that's going to pop up a lot in this class. So we see that there's some uh, D naught is this kind of constant, and then again, it's some energy, some activation energy QA as of over KT. So let's do a practice problem where we can put this relationship to the test. So what is the diffusivity of aluminum at 800 C? So at 800 C for aluminum here, so this is going to be this. So it'll look to be diffusivity at 800 degrees C is equal to 10 to the minus 19 uh, meter squared per second. Why did I do that? Because if I go to my handy uh, 10 to the minus 15 centimeter squared per second to meter squared per second. Let's see that conversion. There we go. We want to put everything in meters squared, so SI units. What about the diffusivity at, so this is my D. So this is not D naught. So this is my diffusivity. There's only one D. So diffusivity is equal to D naught exponential minus Q A T. What about the diffusivity at 1100 degrees C? Well, that's going to be, let's go up here, uh, 10, to my, so 10 to the, let's see, minus 17 meters squared per second. What is the activation energy for diffusion of aluminum? Well, that's a trickier uh, kind of problem. How are we going to figure out that? Well, we have the diffusivity of 800, we have the diffusivity of at 1000, so I could just simply take a ratio, D of uh, 1100 degrees C divided by D of 800 degrees C. So let's go ahead and let's kind of figure that out in Mathematica. So I'm going to go down here, so this is my K, again I want energy in joules, this is my D equation right here, so this is my, actually I could go ahead and uh, Actually, let's go ahead and flip it, just in case. Solve it like we did. So I'm going to go ahead and write this expression out here. So I want to solve these two equations simultaneously. So here's my equation for D. I'm just plugging in for temperature. Again, diffusivity, and that's equal to to the minus 19. Just going to make that clear. So that's my diffusivity here. I also have this diffusivity as well. So this is my D equation. So I'm just saying that my diffusivity plugging in for this particular temperature is equal to this value. My diffusivity here is equal to minus 17. And let's go ahead and add here. And I'm just going to get the real values. And voila, this is my activation energy in joules. This is my D naught as well. So you can just solve for those two equations simultaneously. That's the beauty of Mathematica. So I'm just solving for those two expressions. So you could take the ratio. Again, that's another way to kind of uh, get those values. But I have my activation energy, QA. I've got my D naught. That's it. The last question is, how long will it take for aluminum to, diffuse, to penetrate or diffuse one micrometer into silicon at 900 degrees C? Again, this is the diffusivity of impurities in silicon. So I'm going to use my engineering approximation. X equals 2 square root dt. What's my X? X equals 1 times 10 to the minus 6. What is my diffusivity? So I need aluminum at 900. I could look at it on the graph, or I can use this expression now, D at 900, plug in with these values. So this is my diffusivity here. That's it. And then now I need to just solve for, again, time. So here's my expression, 2 equals x over, actually, there we go. We're just kind of, I'm rearranging here. Actually, we go ahead and just say x. So, actually, let's go ahead and solve, let's solve it for our way. So, solve that x 
which is 100 times 10 to the minus 6, set it equal to uh, 2 times square root of d, which will be this, times t, solve for t, times t, close it, solve for t, and that is going to be kind of our value, oh, excuse me, not 100 micrometers, 1 micrometer. There we go. So let's go ahead. So, at the outset here that uh, you might think, and actually we've been treating diffusion as some isotropic property, but actually it's very, very highly anisotropic for uh, many materials, actually. So again, isotropic means, or an, you know, anisotropic means it will have different scalar values along different kind of directions, uh, specifically crystal graphic directions. So for cubic materials, we have, basically it is isotropic along these kind of different directions. But for tetrachinal uh, materials, it's different. So if we look back and remember all the way back into kind of our lecture two notes, so let's go ahead, all the way back, let's look at some diagonal. Why would it be different for tetragonal? Well, actually let's go back. Tetragonal, we have this the same length, this same length, but then C is not the same length. So you're going to have, it's going to be more difficult, right? For, you know, here's the same, here's the same, but this is much longer. So you're going to have these different values of diffusivity uh, because we are no longer, the lengths aren't the same. Same thing for hexagonal materials. You can see harder or probably, you know, slower diffusivity here. Orthorhombic materials, all different. And you can get to some really, really disgusting values here. So that's kind of just a quick note on diffusion is not isotropic. There's multiple values depending on where you're looking at and different directions along your crystal. So next time we're going to think about diffusion as a random walk, and then we're going to get back to our old friend, our kroger vink notation. Don't think that he was going to leave you behind. So uh, hopefully you remember that and you aced that from your problem set uh, two, or actually uh, problem set three, excuse me. So we'll see you all in the next video. Thanks.